All right, guys. Hello. I just wanted to um, try something different here and give you guys a tutorial that is um, completely focused on uh, the work we'll be doing in class as opposed to the recording of the entire class that you'll have to scrub through conversation and such. So uh, here we go. We're on the uh, portable speaker here, and uh, most of you guys have um, gone ahead and added all your graphics to the top. Uh, some of the stuff we haven't done is we haven't done this... Um, loop here at the top, the handle, uh, and the really uh, kind of complex part of this is getting the um, insert area where the handle would go um, into the side of the um, the part here. Um, so I can just kind of walk you through uh, what I did to uh, get that done. So I'm just going to take my uh, timeline bar here and I'm just going to kind of scroll up to just about, let's see, it was a bunch of splits where it started. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> first move as I did is I just uh, split the top surface so that um, I get a separate surface or separate body going through the top cap. And then from there, uh, punch a little hole through the center using a cut extrude. Uh, from there, I actually add a fillet to the inside of the uh, cut extrude. And that's so that I get an extra edge here and I get the rounded edge inside of there. From there, I uh, went ag again from the side view and I split the surface again. If you take a look at this split from the side view, if I go like this and show you what I do, just draw a circle here from the side view and um, uh, perform a split operation and you can see here that that is the split I did. And yeah, so there's that. <clears throat> From there, go ahead and uh, do another cut extrude just again to the other side and then mirror the actual body from the split from one side to the other. So it's easier if we look at it from this side. So we'll mirror that over to the other side sort of fills in that hole. Perfect. And then combine those two halves together. And then just fill the whole thing out with fillet. So kind of as is without edges shown. It's a little bit hard to see the separation from the individual bodies. You can see that little kind of white dotted line kind of where the part line is, but it's not too clear. So I just started filleting those things out. Here's one right here on this edge, very small little fillet, and then a whole little set of them on each individual edge to make them shine. Going down from there, I'm going to do a very specific sweep to make the handle. And so it's best to look at the sketches for that. So I start off with the 16 millimeter circle right in the center and then we're going to do a single piece of line work that goes out from there ramps up to this straight line and then an arc to the top that's all filled in with a sweep using this circle as the uh, generation curve and then this is the rail sweep rail same thing and then we just move that across to the other side to make that <clears throat> All good, and then the rest is just uh, the graphics that I've been putting on there. I haven't finished my graphics yet, but you have, so that is that. Now, the next thing that we're going to do. Okay, so yeah, I thought I would uh, take a chance at doing the bottom of this design here. And, uh, you know, the best way to do it is to insert the image that we have of the bottom of the item. And uh, so we'll take a stab at that now. First thing I'm going to do is turn off some of the um, glossy effects that I've got running on this model just to get it uh, working a little quicker. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take from the top plane, I'm just going to select the top plane, make a sketch on that top plane. Now I see I have a sketch going. I'm going to go to insert and, excuse me, Sketch tools, sketch picture, always forget what that is. Uh, and then we'll go to speaker projects and we'll go to the images file 
and we have this image here which is cropped and uh, pretty big but still should give us enough detail that we'll have what we need so I'm going to insert that into the top plane I am going to look at this from the top view I'm just using spacebar to kind of get that into position and I'm going to want to put this under here I'm having a big problem though to look normal too. That's better. So control eight. <clears throat> so I'm going to change my model to a wireframe. And I'm just going to use that kind of gold adapter piece there as my guide and try to center it right on the origin there and scale my drawing in. don't quite know how big this is but I'm just gonna wing it so you know I'm kind of reading the edges of my model and I'm kind of paying attention to the rest of this and I'm thinking that's about right so prove that and as usual you can click on this drawing double click on it and you can go to full image transparency and you can drop the transparency down quite a bit Maybe not that much, but hey, enough that you can see what you're doing. Good, good. So that'll be that. All right. There's our image, and it's nice to, you know, name that one layer. You know, picture two or something. Because we have our picture file up above here, picture, you know, and those kind of really backbone style construction image sketches in your design tree you want to be able to spot them quick so all caps picture two you know what's there it's good good so uh, we'll flip back over to uh, our isometric view here and take a look at what we've got so we've got the bottom of this thing kind of giving us reference is what we need to build the bottom and so let's just dig in on that <clears throat> so we're going to keep going on the top plane I'm going to make a sketch on the top plane. And I'm going to look normal too, again. And I'm going to do a couple things here. First, I'm just going to take a circle. I'm going to attach it directly to the origin. Drag out a circle. And put it there. And then I'm going to exit out of that sketch because I want to do something actually. This model is complex. Right? We've got a lot of work done to the top. We've got a lot of pattern in the center. And those kind of things are just kind of messing with my eyes a little bit. Trying to work the bottom of this model on its own. A lot, looking through all the rest of this model makes things a little difficult. So what I'm going to actually do is go up here to the solid bodies and I'm going to hide a couple of bodies. So I got this body here. That's the top cap. I'm going to hide it. I got everything here. This guy. Yeah, see, as you select individual bodies, they will highlight in the solid bodies folder. And you can hide them. All of our logos here. Just hide all that jazz. And there's that. Good. There's this guy. Hide that. And finally, we've got this piece. And we can hide that. All we're trying to do right now is work on this bottom piece, so it's going to make it a lot easier if we can just do that. All right, perfect. So we can actually see kind of what is going on down here at the bottom. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just uh, take this circle here and we're going to extrude it up into this piece here. So let me do that from the side view here. Take this sketch, extrude it up. We are going to merge the result, but when we do that, we want to be very careful that we just merge it into this body here. So we're going to unselect auto select and we're just going to manually select just that piece right there. Even though we have the rest of the model hidden, we're still going to take the extra step to identify which body we want to merge into so that 
we don't accidentally merge into something else. So voila, there's that. Perfect. And now you can see we've given ourselves a little bit of a base right there. Perfect. Okay. I don't know quite how this thing works, but I'm guessing that it's got a fillet in between this edge and this. So I'm going to put a little fillet on there. I'm going to make it about eight millimeters. Let's see, maybe six. And I'm going to take the extra step to make it a curvature continuous fillet because if you can get away with it, that's always a better option when you're making fillets. So that's looking good, nice and attractive. Okay, good news. And just take a look at the bottom piece here to get our reference again. The next step that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make this line here. And what we'll do is we'll do an inset with an extruded cut. Now we do have this little nub here and that's going to be a little bit of a bump. So we want to get that done as well. Uh, so let's take a stab at it. I think this time what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to click on the bottom surface of the model. Okay. And I'm just going to make a sketch on that bottom surface. There's my open sketch reminder. I'll look normal too. And this is good. Again, I'm going to grab my circle tool, make a circle. Okay. And hit escape to drop that tool. I'm going to do one more thing here to get this out of shape. Let's see. I'm going to do this move here. So here's the move. This is our center line. This is the quadrant of our circle. It's kind of the three o'clock on our circle. And so I'm just going to drag out from there and you can see SolidWorks will give me a little guideline. And I'm going to do a theoretical edge for half of this piece. So I'm going to, I'm looking at my cursor now to make sure that there's a vertical sketch relation showing. See that little yellow mark there? Pretty good. Okay, and I'm going to take another line in here, an angle. I'm going to then hit escape to drop that tool. And I'm going to put a, a fillet, a sketch fillet on that edge. This is a 10 millimeter, which looks pretty close. Close enough, actually. So I'll prove that. Maybe if I can, I can tuck this in a little bit. It doesn't really want to do that right now. I'm kind of jiggling this line around a little bit. I want to make sure that this point I'm holding on to right now is right in line with the origin. So see that guideline that pops up? That's my indicator. So perfect. Okay. I really like the way that this line's turned out. So I'm going to add a construction line and then I'm going to mirror across the construction line to get this line to flip over to the other side. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so throw down a construction line here. Use the center line tool to get in there. Excuse me. Get that out of the way. Center line. You just need a horizontal center line. And that's that. We'll go mirror entities. Entities to mirror would be this one, this one, this one. We're going to mirror it all about this line. Perfect. Okay, cool. So this is all looking good. This thing somehow doesn't come out right. You know what I might do is just put a um, smart dimension between this point and this point. And then I will put a smaller value in between those two to see if I can get <clears throat> the shape I'm looking for. I want to confirm again that this is the center line is in line with the origin. So one way to do that is to select that point that's in the center, select the origin, and put a horizontal relation between the two. Okay, and you can see the horizontal relation is there 
in the properties. So that's good. And if you click on the origin now, you can see it sitting there in there. SolidWorks 2020 has a new feature where these sketch relations don't show up as much as they used to in the past. They used to be really annoyingly visible where they'd always be in your face. And uh, anyway, so this sketch is a little bit off from the picture, but we're just going to go with it because we know it's right because we've taken so many additional steps to line up the center with the origin and everything. So we're, we're good. Um, while we're here and the sketch is active, we're going to turn on trim entities and power trim. And you remember how this works. Anything this little line touches will get trimmed away. So we're just going to trim the circle into that additional shape. And that's good enough. So voila, I'm going to go ahead and approve that. And I will exit out of this. And I think that's going to be enough to get us where we're going. Uh, we can hide this picture temporarily, kind of get it out of our way, sort of examine the scenario we've built here. So we have this semi-complex curve now built on the top plane and ready to inset into the bottom body here. So extruded cut, open up our design tree. We're going to scroll down a little to get to sketch 30 is the sketch we're looking for. It's going to press in there about 10 millimeters. We don't need it to be 10. We can make it one millimeter. It just needs to be a touch. Okay. That's what we're looking for. Just a little inset. Okay. Good. good. That's a one millimeter <clears throat> eboss. So if we wanted to add a fillet or something to this edge, we could do that. We just have to realize that it needs to be one millimeter or less. Okay. So why don't we do that? Why don't we take a fillet, set it to, I don't know, 0.5, and just, we'll click this entire body here, or sorry, this entire face right here, like that. Just kind of examine what it's gonna do. You can see it there, filleting that edge halfway up the wall. Very good. It's still set to con curvature continuous, which is nice, and it's working, so we'll go with it. All right, nice. Show our picture again so we can get back to our reference. Look normal too. And also do it this way. Go to our top plane, right click, go to normal two. If you go normal two twice, it'll flip your image around. Okay, so we're good. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make this little inset cut. And just as a reminder to everybody what we're doing here, we are building the step that will allow you to take your portable speaker and set it down onto this charger. So that's, uh, that's the name of the game here. So this cut here that we're trying to make is going to um, set into the, cut, into the cut we're making. So there's this here. So we'll go from there. Now this is going to be the same operation as before. Um, we'll make a sketch on our top plane. We'll use our circle tool, attach it to the origin. We'll make one cut, or sorry, one circle like that. Grab another circle off the origin to there. Good. We're going to grab our line tool and we're going to just draw a line that kind of mimics this cut here. Doesn't need to be exact. We'll throw a center line in to mirror. So off the origin. And we'll say mirror. And we'll take this line and we'll mirror about the center. Okay, and we'll take trim entities again. And we will trim, so. Take away that, and this, and this, and this. That was close. This, that, and that. And there's our little circle. So that's nice. A uh, little off here, still not gonna care. We're gonna just fill it this uh, later on down the road. So good to go. Turn off trim. I think that we are feeling confident enough now. We can just let that 
sketch remain open and set extruded cut to probably say four millimeters looks like it's going in the wrong direction so we just have to flip it so uh, the way to do that is with this little button right here reverse direction that's going to flip it up into the into the model I actually make this five millimeters because we're cutting into a one millimeter step so I'm going to bump it up a little bit so we'll prove that hide our picture to kind of see what we're doing okay good good and we can throw the fillets in as well while we're in here digging around why don't we set the first couple fillets two and we'll just do these edges one i don't know exactly what these are but since we don't have an engineering team to tell us what to do sorry I do we're just gonna wear that hat on our own Okay, so there's those fillets. This could be even bigger. Let's say three. Four. Okay, cool. So that'll do that. And then we're going to add one more fillet. This one's going to be probably three. If you can't tell from the tone of my voice, I'm just kind of guessing on these dimensions, all these things are totally adjustable so any guesses we make can be adjusted later if we get any pushback from the rest of the design team <laughs> I'm gonna put this at one and I'm just going to on this edge here and just add a nice little fillet all the way around there okay so that's happening and then turn on our picture again a couple more cuts to make. We're going to make this and we'll make this as well. So back to the top plane, make a sketch with normal two, hit normal two again. This thing's looking like it's a little off center. I'm just going to make it up. So same as before, I am going to line up with the origin. So I hover my mouse over the origin and sort of drag to the right. And I'm going to have to eyeball this one. Let's pretend it's that big. Um, I do want that to be a square. So I'm going to go the extra effort of adding some smart dimensions to this and just confirming that the width is the same as the height. One step further here and just kind of do the same thing with a different technique this time last time we did hard edges and then fill it after this time we will actually add fillets to the sketch so uh, say three millimeters and we'll go one two three four while this is open you can kind of adjust it yeah that looks more like it Perfect. Okay, good. <clears throat> now that's our nice sketch. And so we're going to, while the sketch is turned on, turn on extruded cut. I'm going to flip the direction to go into the model. I think our last cut was six, so we're going to go okay. Let's just hide our picture here really quick to see what we're doing. Okay, that looks okay. I'm going to say it's actually way too deep. Sorry. Cut extrude. Let's edit that. And let's make it four. Okay. 
All right, I'm gonna do a little couple tricks on this one. So I'm gonna add a fillet to the interior of that cut. Let's say one millimeter fillet, maybe two. Five. Okay, this is a flat face down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna grab that flat face and I'm going to say uh, sketch on that face. And then I'm gonna use convert entities. And if you remember what convert entities does, it will grab the edges of whatever surface you click on and turn it into a sketch you can work with. So you can see this little sketch that it just made on that edge. I'm going to take that and I'm going to push it up with a boss extrude. I'll push it up about two millimeters. Okay. And these little tiny details are just the kind of thing that are going to make this model really sing. I'm trying to put a little one millimeter fillet in here and it does not like it. That could just be the curvature continuous setting. So let's try circular. And before it says no, we can play around with some smaller dimensions. Okay, 0.5 works, 0.8 works as well. Okay, good, good, good. So that's looking nice. I'm gonna to continue to fill it that thing out because I think it just needs, needs help. Yeah. All right, good. And we did put a fillet on the exterior of this cut, so let's do that to this as well. <clears throat> you just have to grab one kind of edge here. And SolidWorks will do the rest. It's like the chain select command in Rhino. It just grabs all edges until you tell it not to. Okay, good. So we've got uh, some good progress going on in here. There's four little um, copper connectors that we're going to need to build here. So we'll build one and mirror it and mirror that just to save time. So I'm going to make a sketch on this plane right here. Look normal too. I'm going to just purely eyeball this because I'm actually that lazy. I am going to grab a center line tool here and I'm just going to put a center line that goes from the midpoint of the top and bottom and one from the left to the right. And that center line will act as my guideline for the mirror plus just a visual on getting everything right here. So there we go. About like that. <laughs> we'll say mirror entities. I'm gonna mirror that circle. I'm gonna mirror it about this. Perfect. And we'll run mirror again. And we'll run a mirror on this and this, and we'll flip it over this fence. Perfect. Okay, so this is good. Um, what I will normally do in this sort of situation is just do a microscopic little extruded cut into the surface. So let's look at this in 3D so you can kind of see it go down. You can see it pushes down. This is two millimeters. I'm going to set it to 0.125. Yeah, there you go. That's the width of a human hair. Okay. And then this thing here, I can actually add an appearance by right clicking on the surface and saying appearance. And I'll get this little window that pops up that allows me to put a different color on just this face or on the whole feature, the cut extrude feature, or on the whole body, or on the whole part. So I want to just do the face. So I'm just going to put a yellow color on that face. And then while this color tool is open, I'm just going to grab these other faces. And you can see the list goes on of the items that will accept that. So a green checkbox and let it go and just because i'm like feeling like this area could really benefit from some 
micro detail, I'm gonna take an eighth of a millimeter fillet and I'm just gonna click right here in the center on the flat plane. And what that'll do is SolidWorks will run around the model and find all the hard edges and fill it just those. And that is that. So that's looking very good. The last step for us here is going to be to add this um, center post hole. And we don't need to even look at our drawing for that. We can just right click on this big flat face inside here and go sketch and normal two and take a circle And for this one, I know that there's an insert in there so that you could put it on like a, like a tripod or something like that. I think it's like a threaded bolt. Uh, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna say that that's an additional feature for the um, deluxe version of this. And so instead what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a little cut, sorry, not a boss, but a cut into the model. About like that much. Perfect, and we'll throw a fillet on there. And we'll just say that the um, the tripod adapter is sold separately and that's gonna need to be purchased additionally. Okay, good, good. All right, if you wanted to take it one step further while we're working on the interior of this piece here, we could just make a sketch on this flat surface down here. And while we have an open sketch sitting on that flat plane, we could say convert entities to make a sketch down there. This sketch that you get when you do a convert entities comes with a specific type of sketch relation. And that sketch relation is here. It is the sketch, uh, the convert entities sketch relation. Uh, and if you click on that sketch relation and delete it, it transforms the sketch that Convert Entities makes from a converted entity into a typical sketch, which allows you to play with it a little bit easier. So I'm just going to take this and just very microscopically pull it in. And just so that there's a little gap between the sketch and then the edge. All right. And then I'm gonna take another circle and I'm gonna lock onto the origin. Okay, and I'm gonna draw another circle inside that sketch. Hit escape to drop those two circle tools. And then we'll just do a boss extrude up from there. Okay, now boss extrude in this sort of situation, you want it to end right at this surface here. Okay, so you don't want it to be like down here and you don't want it to be up here. So with the boss extrude, you can actually set the direction of the boss extrude to stop at the plane of another surface. So even if it's up here like this, you can go here to direction one and you can go up to surface and then enter the surface in and it will mathematically read right up to there. Okay. Perfect. Okay, that was good, but I want to actually edit that and make sure that this little thing here is not merged into the rest of the model. That way, this little piece here is its own little body. And if we want to, we can we can add an appearance to it here by opening this up and saying, you know, do you want to add an appearance to the face or to the whole boss extrude? I want the boss extrude. I'll just put a blue color on it. And I'm just gonna finish this off with a little fillet. 0.125 is an eighth of a millimeter. We'll just put that right there. Okay, so that little thing in there, we're not going to thread it. We're just going to say that it's a piece that 
you take out and then you put your threaded piece in if you're going to go with the deluxe version. Who knows? But there should be something in that hole. So it looks like it has purpose. Uh, but we're good on that. I think it's time for a save. I'll save. We'll take out real view graphics with shadows and ambient occlusion and everything. And yeah, we got ourselves some, uh, some good detail there. Let's take a look at the image. Here's picture two. All is good except for this rubber gasket. We talked about this in class, how slick the designers were for the rubber gasket um, and how they uh, kind of did like a color change on all of the different uh, sort of regulation icons and QR code for the factory and everything. Uh, so let's actually do that. Let's let's. We're not going to do all the graphics and stuff, but we should at least add the rubber gasket because when you take this expensive Bose portable speaker and you slam it down onto the receiver or onto the charger, um, if it's plastic on plastic, it's going to click and it's going to bang and it's maybe going to break. So this thing, this gasket here, this rubber footer sort of acts like a little pad so that you don't break it. And then also so that when you do set it down on its charger, it feels good too. So that's gonna increase the user experience and make the product feel a lot better. So we kind of need it. Also, it looks cool. So uh, the bottom of our model right now is nice and flat. So that's good. We can just make a sketch on that flat plane by right clicking and going sketch. We can say convert entities and Convert entities. Did it work? Hello. There's the sketch. Are you doing what I want? Hold on. Excellent. I can't see if there's, it looks like it did a sketch there, but it didn't get the interior here. So fine. So, yeah, see when I click on this edge here, I can see the convert entities. Sketch relation is there, which tells me there is a sketch there. I just need to add a couple of additional edges. So, existing relations. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna go click, click, click. Oh, this is a little finicky. Okay, that should have worked. So let's go with that. You can see the sketch sitting inside of there. So what that did is it duplicated this edge and then we had to individually select this edge and hit convert entities to get a copy of this edge as well. So we're gonna edit that sketch and we're gonna to try to do a quick little tiny offset. 0.125 offset. And the sketch is too complex to grab here, so we'll grab it out of the design tree. It's not playing ball. Offset entities. Doesn't like it. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Let's just delete this whole plan. Okay. Let's just hide this whole sketch and I'll show you guys a different way to do this. So we have a sketch that made this cut here. Where is it? Aha. Uh -huh. Here we go, cut extrude. Here's the sketch, okay. It's perfect. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make a sketch on this surface, just like we did before. So we'll say sketch on this surface. We'll go down and we'll grab the sketch that's running this cut extrude here. Okay, so I've got this sketch and we'll say convert entities. And that's gonna do that. 
Now we're going to grab this edge here, and we'll say convert entities again. Perfect. Okay, now while we've got this sketch open, we'll say can offset entities. So zoom in on that because it's, yeah, so there you go. So it's working. You can see we are really operating at such a small size now that it's having trouble and it's giving us these hard edges. So if you see these kind of hard edges, that's just the graphics processor of the computer trying to process the super small details. So actually, if we uh, bump this up to say maybe 0.2, it softens a little bit. I'm going to have to do this one at a time. So hold on. Offset entities. Perfect. Uh, down here at the bottom, when you do an offset entities, there's a section that says construction geometry, base geometry, or offset geometry. And what that means if we zoom in here is that we are offsetting a curve that's here on this edge. So we don't want that original sketch, the, the base geometry, to remain active and be active line work. So we're going to set it to be construction geometry by saying base geometry is construction geometry. There you go. So there's that. Okay, good. I'm going to edit this sketch here. So this sketch is actually still edited, still active. So we'll say convert entities. Sorry, offset entities. This time we're going to offset this sketch here, but we're going to reverse it. Now here's what's going on here, guys. So when I tried to do an offset entities of the interior sketch, plus the exterior sketch. It both wanted to go the same direction. So I have to do two offsets. One of them that pushes this sketch out and the other one that pushes this sketch in. Both these operations happen within the same sketch. I'm just gonna zoom in here, try to see if that worked. I think it worked. Again, we're at such a small tolerance. We're good to go. So I'm going to try to do a boss extrude. I'm still active in this sketch here. So I'm going to do a boss extrude. And we're going to set this to, say, half millimeter. We're going to make sure to unmerge the result. And this is our little foam pad. OK. Let's give that guy a color. So another way to add a color to an item, this is now a separate body. So you can actually do it right here in the design tree. If you're up here at the top of the design tree, you can open the carrot. And you can go from the beach ball down to whatever item you want to change color. And click on that beach ball and say appearance. And you can give it, a, give it an appearance. Cool. So now we're set on the bottom of this thing. A lot of fun details here on the bottom. Not too difficult of techniques except for that last one with the foam pad. So we'll go over it again in class. So hopefully you guys get it. And um, yeah, save your work. And we're good to go. So hope that helps, guys. Thanks for watching.